Hello, my name is Marina Vatkina. I am the EGB 3.2 specification lead, and this webinar we will cover the changes to the Enterprise Java Bean 3.2, what uh, we introduced new, how we improved the uh, existing specification, and why did we do so. So this is, as I said, the next version of the EGB spec with the previous one was 3.1, this one is 3.2, and EGB are now simple, light, and powerful backbone of Java Enterprise with POJO-based beans and simple local and remote views. So what did we introduce uh, in this release? We introduce message-driven beans with no methods message listener interface. We improved stateful session beans two ways. We introduced transaction support to lifecycle callbacks, and we introduced ability to disable passivation. We simplified rules for designating local and remote business interfaces for session beans, and we enhanced timer service API security embeddable EGB container API a little. We introduced EGB API groups, optional features, and we tried to better align with other specifications in the platform. In this last bullet, we won't go into the details further on, but I'll mention that now EGB specification acknowledges existence of CDI spec and uh, inject constructors. We documented a new GMS MDB activation config property, standard activation config properties, and uh, we cleaned up alignment with other specifications. MDBs, what did we change in MDBs? We introduced MDBs with a no methods message listener interface. It is a marker interface, and when an MDB implements this interface, it exposes all public methods as message listener methods. Uh, which allows resource adapter to introspect the bin class and decide which method to call in which circumstances. This solves two, pro uh, this solves, uh, two problems. One, if the single uh, MDB would like to listen to multiple requests from a resource adapter and be flexible in what kind of request it supports, um, the resource adapter would need to publish multiple single method interfaces for the MDBs to implement, and this is not very developer friendly. And also what we in, uh, introduce is the ability for resource adapter to introspect the bin class so that resource adapter can read the metadata and understand which exactly call back to call and when and uh, maybe how to parse the arguments. This is a major improvement to the MDB component contract since a long time. Uh, on this slide, you can see the example of such message-driven bin. The command listener interface has no methods, and modern bin is marked as message-driven. It is an MDB that implements this command listener. By doing so, both do something and do something else, methods become message listener methods, the resource adapter can call them. To help resource adapter identify those and give some more information to the resource adapter, the methods are annotated with command. Uh, they can be annotated with something else if that is the contract with the resource adapter. And for example, do something method has also at unpacked annotation uh, for its first argument so that resource adapter knows that it needs to pre-process the uh, arguments before the values before passing them into the method. Stateful session bean improvements. As I mentioned, uh, there are two types of improvements for stateful session beans. Uh, the first being transactional support for lifecycle callbacks. In EGB 3.1, singleton session beans have been introduced. And those beans had, from the beginning, transactional support for lifecycle callbacks. The experts in the expert group uh, felt that 
this feature is uh, very useful for stateful session bins as well. But stateful session bins uh, already exist, and uh, their lifecycle callbacks, by definition, are executed in unspecified transaction context. So not to break existing stateful session bins, and we looked at it very carefully, uh, we decided uh, to introduce opt-in option for allowing this kind of support in those lifecycle callbacks by specifying transaction attribute requires new. And this is the only value available because this is the behavior of singleton session bins. Even if um, the value is defaulted for them, it is, the behavior is still requires new. The transaction is started at the beginning of the callback and is completed at the end. So to make it absolutely clear what you are requesting, the only valid attribute to be used is transaction attribute requires new. If you do so, your callback will be executed in its own transaction. The second improvement for stateful session bins is ability to disable passivation. Why would you do so? You would do so, for example, if you store non-serializable, non-transient field in your stateful session bin. If the container decides to passivate such bin, the passivation will obviously fail, and the container will destroy the bin. It's probably not what you intended to happen. Another problem that developers encounter is a costly passivation and activation. If you hold a lot of state, like you know, the persistent contacts with a lot of entities in your stateful session bin, it can take a lot of time not only to write out the state, but to read it back when the bin is accessed again. So to allow developer flexibility uh, to disable the passivation, we introduced an attribute on stateful annotation that by default is true, again, for backward compatibility. Passivation capable equal false will disable passivation of the stateful session bin. You can use deployment descriptor to uh, set this flag as well. Now, you need to understand that when you are using this feature, the failover will probably not be supported for such bins because failover in most cases is implemented using passivation uh, over being in one server instance and activation it in another server instance. If you can do passivation, if the instance uh, is not passivatable, the failover will probably not be supported or you won't be able to preserve the state of the instance uh, against the server restart. We simplified rules uh, how local and remote business interfaces are designated for session bins. In the first example, we have a class A that implements a single interface foo. And uh, for this simplest case, the spec in EGB 3.1 was saying that you don't need to say anything if there is a single interface the bin by default is a local bin, and this single interface represents the uh, local business view of the bin. But in the second example, when a bin class implements more than one interface, the developers are required to designate all those interfaces explicitly every time. So we felt this is uh, absolutely unnecessary if the interfaces do not designate themselves as local or remote, then by default, uh, all of them become local business interfaces of the bin. So in the third example, stateless bin A exposes two local views, foo and bar, without any extra coding uh, from the developer. If a developer uh, intended bin A to be a remote bin, uh, all that is necessary is mark this class at remote with at remote annotation. If foo and bar do not have designation of their own, they would become remote views of the stateless bin A. Other enhancements. 
timer service API. We introduce a new method to set timer service API called get all timers that returns all active timers in the same EGB module where the method is executed. It is a shortcut for the previous option of asking each and every bean for its own timers and then combining the result in a global view. And this is useful when you want to introspect all the timers or um, present them to an admin uh, for the decisions. Along those lines, we um, removed the limitation that Java X EGB timer and Java X EGB timer handle can be only accessed by the bean that owns the timers. We felt it is absolutely a necessary restriction, and if an outsider can call, get all timers, that outsider should be also able to check the next time out or get info from a timer or even cancel the timer. But of course, um, this outsider needs to be very careful. Security enhancement. Uh, there are two security enhancements uh, that we added to the EGB spec, mostly to align with what a server spec already uh, allows. One of them being a predefined container-provided security role with a special name star star that indicates any authenticated caller independent of the actual role name. So you can check if caller in role without knowing uh, the role name and verifying that it is the caller is authenticated without knowing the caller uh, role name explicitly. Though if this star star is defined as a user defined uh, role name, then um, the user defined role name takes precedence and you can't use this feature. We also simplified requirements for defining security role using EGB deployment descriptor. Now security role uh, specified in the EGB deployment descriptor is implicitly defined. Embeddable EGB container. EGB container has uh, a method close that is optional to be called but is, uh, is a good practice to be called. And when you code with it, Obviously, you need to have try and finally block, um, and without a closable interface available, it was a natural choice for the EGB container now to implement the auto closable interface, and you need to explicitly close the container if you use try with resources statement. EGB API groups. EGB 3.1 specification introduced EGB Lite group, and the rest was everything all together means EGB Lite plus everything else is EGB full container. Uh, container providers had a lot of requests, and uh, they also wanted to do it themselves to provide extra features in the EGB Lite container without requirements to switch to the full container instead. So the EGB API groups define those groups of features that the container can add to the EGB Lite group and be in a portable way. Uh, the specification defines not only the groups themselves, but the rules of adding uh, them to the container. For example, if 2.x uh, Interfaces, session interfaces are supported, interop must be supported. If uh, MDB container is, um, if GMS MDBs are supported, GMS must be supported, and so on. The rule, the main rule is that each group must be supported together. So if any feature in a group is supported, the whole group must be supported. And you can uh, check the spec for the list of those groups. Uh, they're very reasonable. We also extended the EGB light group itself to include local asynchronous um, session bin invocations and non-persistent EGB timer service. We felt they're very useful by default in the EGB light container. Java E6 introduced a notion of 
proposed optional and optional features in the platform. EGB 3.1 marked two features as proposed optional following those rules, uh, them being CMP and BMP entity beans and JAXRPC endpoints and uh, JAXRPC clients. EGB 3.2 went uh, the next step and make the, made those features fully optional. They are not required to be supported by the container vendors. And we expect that going forward, most of developers will use GPA and web services instead. Uh, we not only made them optional, we moved them to a separate document, uh, reducing the size of the core document by like 200 plus pages. But if you will go to download the document on the GCP website, you will see both documents available, the core document describing all required features and the optional feature document dedicated to the optional features only. And um, this is what we did in the very high level in this release of the Enterprise Java Beans. We improved component contract for message-driven and stateful session beans. We simplified and enhanced existing features. We made some features optional and we better aligned with other specifications. Try it out yourself. Let us know. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Download the SDK and file bugs if we missed anything, both in implementation and in the spec. Thank you very much.